address. Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is Life at the Lockup, episode 45. I need this to be, I need this to be a whole new season. We got a lot of new people. This should not be episode 45 at all. I'm just so lost in the sauce of it all, child. Anyway, um, I hope everyone is having a good Sunday. Even though I'm recording this on Saturday, y'all gonna get it on Sunday, okay? But I hope y'all all having a good day. Um, I will have other content up. I'm doing Bell Collective. I will possibly have my Love and Mary Tons review, the girl Love and Mary Tons feel review up today. If not, either the Meg the Stallion documentary is up. Or both of those may be up on Monday morning. I don't know yet, okay? But anyway, let's get to these people around here, okay? But y'all know there's always other uh, content up. My live from Friday and my live from Wednesday. It was other stuff too, but I took down those thumbnails. But again, y'all go to my channel and look at the stuff, okay? Um, This episode to me... It wasn't all that. Hey, how y'all doing? Yes, I have braids again. Um, I always say every time I get braids, I'm not going to get braids no more. I hate getting my braids because it takes two and a half hours to get to get them. I mean, it takes me two, three days to take my braids down. I hate having to pull, you know, the dirt from my, my roots or whatever. And here I am. Okay, but again, the weather changing. I got a couple of events coming up or whatever, and I'm like, girl, I'm tired. Braids, thank you. Okay, anyway, um, look, this episode, which I say Zaria or is it Zaria? I think it's Zaria. Zaria, she needs some therapy. Okay, Brittany and Key Rock are faking it, and I want them to be Brittany and Key Rock need to go for sure. Okay, also go away, Bianca. Anyway, y'all, let's get to the peoples around you. Y'all know, like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that stuff. You can follow me on, on social media. Um, at Jelly's Corner. I could have like, what's my name, child? It's Jelly's Corner. Uh, child, Kimberly and Joey, when, when the felon starts making more sense than the non felon, we have a problem, okay? Joey and Kimmy around here have a little, little lunch date or whatever. And Kimberly finally tells Joey, hey, Joey, guess what? Uh, yeah, I'm not legally divorced. I'm not even close to being legally, legally divorced. Okay. Um, I've been legally separated for a year. However, the divorce is not on the horizon. And child, the fact that Joey got upset. Joey was mad. I can't believe this. Wait a minute. You've been legally separated for a year, right? She said, yeah. She, he's like, did you file for divorce? You do know you have to file for divorce. When she said before that her first marriage, she was separated and a year later she was divorced, I said, ma'am, did the man file for the board at that time? Because she made it sound like she just magically got divorced. And I'm like, maybe the first husband filed. Um, Someone has to file for divorce. Is she stupid? She might be stupid because on what earth do you think the two can be legally separated and that equals a divorce? And when Joey said, you know you have to file for divorce. And I, I, are, you, are, you, are you fooling me? He gets upset. He walks outside. You lied to me. Had me thinking you was all about divorce. Okay? I cannot believe you. What is wrong with you? If you keep your ex in the back pocket, you want to bang him a little bit? Like, why am I here? And blah, blah, blah. He got up, walked out the restaurant. Child then came back in and said, I'm not going to get no job. And 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 um and 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 help buy a house, okay? Cause that means your husband can claim half of the house because y'all still married. Okay, I'm not I said he doesn't Joy just don't want no job. Um he said, look, you need to immediately go get a lawyer and get a divorce. And I was like, so did y'all never have a real grown-up conversation? Or did she really say, Yeah, I'm divorced? Mm -hmm. Filed and everything. She was lying because he said, I feel like she lied to me. I think y'all lied on each other. Okay. He said, Kimberly, you have to start thinking. Okay. You have to think, Kimberly, because this is, I said, child, when the, the felon is like, 
you stupid. You're not thinking right. I was like, first of all, we know because she up here buying you cars and tires and she only get paid 15 bucks per hour. She can't afford things. She affording you. So we already know she don't think right. Okay. So child, that's what they got going on. I say Jesus be offense because he made complete sense, even though we know he full of stuff, full of poop. But I said, whatever. Um, this is not gonna be a long review. Uh, let's get to because it wasn't that much going on. Daniel and Bianca. I need Bianca and Daniel to get out of my face. I need them to go away, to go somewhere. I don't know where they need to go, away from here, out of my face. Okay, get off my TV, off my computer, out of my face. Okay, because she's a child, he needs therapy as well. Okay, he has a lot of uh, PTSD, so this is not, it, it, it does not compute, okay? So, we know the last episode, you know, he went and met with his cousin, and the cousin said, child, Bianca said, she's an alcoholic, you don't give her no good dick, okay? Y'all had bad sex, so he's a bit upset about that, okay? He get home, like, hey, I talked to my cousin, and what did you say to that? What do you mean? I I didn't say nothing. He said, my cousin said that you said that, you know what I'm saying, um, we don't have good sex, okay, and you admitted to having a drinking problem. Now, she did. Now, he, first of all, he's so embarrassed that his cousin knows he don't have good sex, okay? He brought up how the last time I had sex was over five, like, he's 31. Okay, let's let's do the math. Okay, he's currently thirty one. Okay, he said he's been at now he's been in prison for five years. Yeah, so that's five. Okay, so that's twenty six. He also said before he went to prison, it had been a while because why he was a crackhead. Okay, let's just say he hadn't had sex. Let's just say let's say he was a crack baby, a crackhead, a drug addict for three years. Okay, that takes him to twenty three. Most 23-year-olds sometimes don't know what they're doing, okay? At 23, some men, all they know is to put it in, and that's it, okay? So he is really like a 20-year-old having sex currently, even if they want. So he's embarrassed that his cousin knows he's not good at sex right now, but he has been a minute, okay? So Bianca, first of all, she lied and said, I didn't, I never said I had a drinking problem. I didn't, I didn't say that. The flashback showed you this said. Now she did say, maybe I do have a drinking problem because she kept drinking. But she said, I didn't say that. Your cousin was drunk. Okay. So he don't know what he said. No, ma'am, you don't know what you said. Okay. But she admit I did tell him hey, about the bad sex. Like I just felt like, you know, I just what you know, I don't feel bad that I told you that too. I told you all you did was it in. I'm a woman, I need more, I need more affection, not just penetration. And then, look, as a woman, I agree. Don't look before you get in the tub, you put your fingers around there and test the waters. Hey, don't nobody just get right in the tub. You, you put your fingers down there and you do things to make sure that it's nice and warm at the right temperature. If the water is wet, you don't want the water to be dry, okay? When you wash dishes, you, your fingers, what you, you, you make the soap water. Mm -hmm. You do this to the water, for the soap. So the same way you wash dishes to make sure the soap is soapy and it's wet down there, the same way you run your bath water okay, and put your hand in the tub and do this and, and wrench it around now to be sure that the water not too hot, not too cold, okay, even in the shower, you put your finger in and test, and test the waters, so I can agree, test the waters, but Bianca, tell that man that I am a firm believer in, you tell the person you're with what you like, he may think all you want is for him to stick it in and he don't know no better, okay? Teach him. He's a baby. He's a, he's a baby. Okay, anyway, so they had that talk or whatever the following day. Oh, we talked all night. She told me stuff. I told her stuff. And now we fine. Okay, 
So, you know, Daniel brings about Bianca feels, she told him that she feels, if you propose to me and we engage, that makes me feel more secure in this relationship. He like, I don't agree with that. I don't think engagement is what can help or whatever. Um, but I'm going to go ahead. I got this promise ring. Uh, we finna go for a little walk. I'm going to see how it feels. And maybe, you know, if it's romantic enough, I'll give her the promise ring. And then she'll be my promise ring girlfriend or whatever, okay? So they walk, they walk in. And the outside, and the open air, and the open space, and the vastness of the world. And Daniel is having PTSD. He's freaking out a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. He's walking kind of fast. He's breathing kind of heavy or whatever. They're trying to hold hands. That ain't working out or whatever. So it's, it's a weird walk down the street with two people. And he like, look, I'm just having some anxiety, okay? Uh, about walking in the open, you know, all this the, the space, you know, after being in prison in a box for five years, um, this is a lot for me to handle. Now, I feel like it's not, it's probably not just he's out of prison. It's probably once he's out of prison, he's clean and sober. He ain't, dr he ain't drunk or high. Okay. And so, and he has to get acclimated to stuff. Now, he is just freaking out a little bit. And she don't know why. She's like, what's wrong with you? Uh, hold my hand. What are you doing? And then she gets a cuss and the fussing. He gets agitated. He kind of walks away or whatever. And he's like, you know, I've been in prison for a year. Like, this is a lot for me. And he's only been out, I think, maybe two or three days now or whatever. And so they're kind of arguing. Okay, he walk away. She crying. I don't know what happened. You know what? It's hard. She just walked down the street, and you know now when she brings up as he walks away, she said while he was in prison, he told me he we were talking. He would say he has a hard time dealing with open sky, outsideness, walking around in the open because it makes him scared. It gives him anxiety. Okay, and she said I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know what to do with that. I didn't believe. I don't know what to do. I said, girl, so he told you how he felt before he came home. And child, I know how you have a hair on me. But I keep moving these braids. I can't put them up in a bun yet because I got them today. But trust and believe by, what's today? Say it's Saturday. By Monday, these will be up in a bun. Okay, but today, down, I don't keep messing with them. Anyway, but I'm like, he told you before he came home what his issue was. Like, I, this is, this, this will be hard for me. Um, now he brought up, he said, like, I was, in a, I was in a box for five years. Okay. Um, he said the vastness of the open sky is a lot for me to take in. Um, I do feel like I ruined this moment or whatever, but I was just, I, I'm freaking out. You know what I'm saying, and then she cussed and fussing, which makes it even worse. Okay. And I feel bad and blah, blah, blah. Um, while it may seem weird that he got triggered simply by just walking down this path in the park, I feel like because he was so used to being enclosed, not seeing the outside, child, maybe he think he gonna get, I don't know. But at least he's open enough to say, this freaks me out right now and I have to get used to it in order for me to stop freaking out. So she, like, she know it, she just don't know how to handle it because she's a child. You know, so they meet back up or whatever. He like, look, this is what's going on. He says all oh, that he said. You know, he said, look, can we go back home? I got you. Can we go back to the house? I'm sorry. You know, I wasn't upset with you. I was never mad with you. I was just having a little anxiety about being out here, but it was this about you, okay? And she, okay, I'm sorry for freaking out and for cussing and fussing or whatever. I, I, I feel also for not getting it, okay? I get it now. Yes. Give me a kiss. Let's go home. And they walk home. Okay. Um, he like, I think we have a lot <laughs> to deal with before getting engaged. And then she said, I think his PTSD is a lot more than what I thought it would be. And it's going to be a lot harder. And she mentioned that it will not be as easy as I thought to be a couple. Because y'all strangers. Okay. Literally stra stranger danger. Stranger danger is what it is. Okay. Anyway. Uh, next up, Melissa and Louie. 
you know, Melissa and Louis are around the same age. You know, they went to high school. They at least knew each other, whatever. So they weren't total strangers and whatnot, okay? You know, <sighs> Melissa's batshit crazy. Louis seems nice. Louis seems like he, Louis was the quintessential stoner guy who just was a child drug and all that stuff okay and i feel like it seemed like it feel like since he got out this time he you know moved to a different state he's doing good okay he's staying clean he's working he's in a relationship and all that stuff he's seeing cool melissa seems to be a middle age and i and i'm middle ages i'm 42 i'm a year older than her um, Melissa is a middle aged, low self esteem, neurotic woman. And nothing would ever make her understand, ma'am, you are okay. Like, you tripping, okay? I get she's been through some things or whatever, but she said, she, Cuckoo could cool, 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 okay? So Joey literally wants to propose. He's already bought that ring for 18500 bucks. And he's like, I just had to set up a, a, a proposal. And we both work so much. I work, she work, whatever. Our schedules are busy, busy, busy. So I have to plan a date night for me to be able to propose. For me to be able to propose. And we see him at, like, the gym training some girl. He brings up, you know, I don't have a specific client type it just so happens my clients are all you know women and i see you don't you want to why because like louis is a handsome man he you know he isn't a bodybuilder or whatever however louis looks like the kind of trainer women would have louis does not look like the kind of trainer men would say i want him to train me like he don't it, Unless they're gay. Okay. So I feel like, yes, he had a certain clientele, but based on how he looks, and it ain't his fault. You know what I'm saying? It's not his fault. Do I feel like if he was ugly, smuggly in the face, he would have women booking him? Probably not. Probably because his, his body ain't great. It ain't bad either. He has a regular, you know, in shape body. You know, and but that's it. But most folks who train, they want like bodybuilding and this and that, and that ain't him. However, he can do what he do. Okay, so fine. Now Melissa, who's seen like his little workout videos or whatever on like social media, hates it. I oh, he works with women so much, you know, and I don't like it or whatever. He has to you know be thrusting now, girl. Again, Melissa is. She's a woman with low, low self esteem because of the because of the men in her past. I get that. She to me, yes, she liked Louis in the past. However, she also probably felt like Louis was on drugs. Louis is in prison. Who else would want? He has bad teeth. Who else would want him but me? So while he's in prison, I'm the only person he can give us his time to. And when he gets out, because I've been there for him, he want me and only me, me. And now this man out, he's a handsome man and stuff. <laughs> um, he's out and stuff, and he, his teeth are fixed. He's working. Like he's a like if we didn't know that he was a, a meth head in the past, we'd be like, oh hey, no, we not now. So I think she picked someone she felt like would be, you know, her little slave. Okay. And no, no one would want him. And he's so destitute, he would only want her. And he got out and was like, I don't care if I don't have no teeth, okay. I am still me, bitch. Okay. <laughs> I like you, but don't even look at. And so, whatever. And she, and she feel like any woman who's around him possibly wants to fuck him, and I don't want him fucking nobody else but me. And I'm like, man, that man love you. We don't know why, because you're a little bit cuckoo, but it is what it is. Okay. So, 
date night he planned a little date night he had a little date night for them to walk up like a huge light house to be up in the sky to see the the scenery or whatever and so she complained oh my i'm in heels and all oh, all the stairs and blah 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 okay why did you not tell me okay anyway and so we're at the top of the little white the little the little lighthouse thing or whatever I'm tired. It's windy up here. I hate heights. Okay, I hate heights. I hate surprises. I want to be in control. I hate it up here. He's like, you just walk around the thing with me. But I've seen it. I see it, Louie. And she did not. Because in the ground, in the, in the sand, he wrote, like, marry me in the sand. And she's like, is that for me? He was like, yeah. He again got down on one knee. He said, will you marry me? Yes. Yes. A thousand times. Yes. And so she says, so now 18 months after he got out, they are finally engaged. However, she, if she don't fix her self-esteem, they not going to work because she will always be jealous of any female near him. And eventually he's going to get tired of that. And some rich white woman is going to make him her sugar baby. Okay. is <laughs> You know, and we see you weren't why I work so much and stuff and blah blah blue blue to a four, your ring or whatever. Is it real? He's like, Yes, it's real. Okay. You know, all the working out you do and the women, you know, and thrusting. He was like, What the what, what the girl? How are you how are you bringing up other women in the proposal? So they engage. Child, fix it. Uh, look, y'all take about 30 seconds and like the video. to respond to my text. Um, next up, we have Brittany and Key Rock. I don't think people, look, Brittany and Key Rock, I just feel like they are faking it. Not their relationship, not their they're, they're, they're faking this stuff for the show. Um, I feel like they are they already in Texas and they act like they're not in Texas. Girl, it is I, I don't care. Okay. We see Britney still getting the call from her PO when she's saying, you know, I'm gonna marry Key Rock. Oh, maybe you should not. The Texas may not like that. And so she feel like, well, should I tell Key Rock? Should I not tell Key Rock? Her good friend said, girl, tell Key Rock. And I was like, I don't care. You know, we see them preparing for this fuck ass wedding. Okay. And I don't get why they would care about me, Mary Key Rock. And we're a couple and we love each other. And I feel like, one, even the, I get the PO's point and that it can look like y'all faking it. I fully get that. I also feel like. If it's investigated, the PO office in Texas will see they was on a whole show, two whole seasons of them dating. Okay, so they're not faking it. Not only that, they were engaged way before they planned to move to Texas. So it's not as if they said, hey, let's scheme a scam. Like, like it ain't that. So I'm like, the PO had a very valuable explanations of why they maybe shouldn't do it but I also feel like if if tech has really looked into it it's proof of them being together like they're a couple the fuck okay key rock family has also moved to texas so it, it, anyway so this to me seems fake because there's enough proof that they can eventually approve her if they were to get married i need that be 
Okay, so child, they not at this damn wedding on the beach, not ground the beach, on a, on the side of a lake. Okay, with coffee in his her because her coffee is the stud daddy, coffee in her stud daddy suit. Okay, Brittany's good friend, her dress right there. I guess she's a maid of honor. I don't know. And Brittany wait until they at the water with the with the fish and say, "Hey, Key Rock, I want to tell you so. We gotta talk. Can we go talk? Because Key Rock don't know nothing." Key Rock just want to get married. Key Rock, like, I'm, I love my girl and stuff. And I said, uh, Key Rock, sir, read the room. Read. At the end of the day, Key Rock can just go to Texas and get to working. Okay. Key Rock can, Key Rock should go to Texas, get established in Texas, get to working, get to, to living in your, your apartment, whatever. Let Brittany keep applying. Okay, and then once Brittany can move to Texas, y'all then get married in Texas, and then move. Girl, they need it. They faking it. A part of me feel like they're already approved for Texas, whatever. They bullshitting, getting on my nerves. Okay, but they had the child. We're gonna find out next week if she tell them. Cause we don't know what she's gonna tell them. But don't get me up in my suits with my with my stud daddy. Okay, by the water, and you wanna stop. Next up, lastly, um, we have Zariah and Troy. Y'all know I don't like Zariah and Troy. Okay, I I I fairly I'm so dumb. Hold on, y'all. Anyway, you're texting Zariah and Troy. Did y'all see Troy, Mama? All on TikTok, cussing Zaria out. When she told Zaria, that ain't no bad acne, that's because all the men was busting on your face. I said, not men busting on child. Girl, I heard back in the day that sperm was good for your skin. I heard the protein, child. Look, I'm, I, look, not, 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 T, not TMI, um, I don't have bad skin, but I also don't do facials, okay? But I did hear, you know, the protein in sperm, you know, it's, it's a good cleanser for the face. So I feel like, I mean, unless she had child crackheads with Coke 45 and they sperm count on her face, I don't know. But the mom was, the child, the mom was going, are you old bitch? I was like, what happened? And that made that me and mama, I mean, go off, child. If I can find, I'm not going to do that. Go, was going off fully. Child, did I say some of it? I because y'all know sometimes I'll be um I'll be downloading stuff on my phone to talk about later, but I can't remember. Oh, child, look, hold on, let me see. Is it gonna play? I'm gonna have to rag this bitch early in the morning. I'm gonna have to rag Saria. Saria, you popping that shit. You popping that shit, Saria. Who was Mercedes? The G Y N. You need to worry about your son. You worried about my grown ass kids, bitch. And you better not put Vaughn name in it because he right here. Shoot it up. 
the nerve to keep trying to trying to drag somebody yeah. with your funky ass. And that shit ain't come from bad skin. That came from niggas busting on your face. My son got the nerve to want you, you piece of nothing ass. Child. What happened between Zaria and the mama? Child. That's just one of the little clips I saw her going off on Zaria Zariah on social media. So I don't know what happened in real time, in real life, but child, she mad. Hey, she mad. Um. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not a child. I'm, I'm bringing out the news. Um, Zaria parents' house caught on fire. Not it, everybody safe. They all made out alive. Okay, her son was there because she's there. Her son often spends the weekends at the grandparents' house. Okay, but you know something happened or whatever. So her son was there. Her brother was not there. And it seemed like the fire was like in the brother's room because a lot of the stuff that was on the ground on the ground was stuff from the brother's room. The house didn't burn down, but again, it's damaged in there or whatever. Okay. But thank God everybody made it out safe. I can't believe my parents could have died. Oh, Troy. I'm so sad. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> but they okay. You know what I'm saying? Maybe because I went to a psychic. You know, is it my fault? Because I feel like a psychic. I think she predicted this because she said things would be destroyed. And look at the house and the stuff, Troy. It's destroyed. Maybe she write about us. Maybe we won't make it. Troy said, the fuck you mean? I'm sitting right here next to you. When Troy said, what are you talking about? I'm sitting right here. She said, yeah. For now, I was like, now, I think her and him are, are together currently, too. But you know how cuckoo would you get to be to feel like my parents' house caught on fire. So the therapist, the therapist, the psychic saying things will be destroyed. Maybe she made a fire at my parents. I said, bitch, what? Girl, <laughs> Troy then, you know, because Troy then gets in a car with her daddy to go to the church. Okay. Because um, they have, like, a community celebration day or whatever with the people in the community and so they want to set up okay and so the daddy's like we in a ho we live in a hotel right now you know it's hard we kind of get things together but thank god we're alive by, by the grace of god it was and he said it was an accidental electrical fire and people, what that i think what that means is you know it wasn't as if it was purposefully done okay but some, some I don't know the wire got cross fire. Okay. Either way I go, I mean, they all okay. Anyway, at the church, you know, the daddy said, Hey Troy, so you know, what would what would your sermon, what would your testimony be? Because we have in the community thing. And what if somebody asks you, like, what, what what right do you have? Okay, to have a foundation. Okay, what's your journey? You know, you know what I'm saying? Because some folk do feel like, how can you have a foundation to help other folk? Like, what is your story? And so Troy said, because you know, Troy keeps saying he don't want to be no, no uh, preacher. Troy said, like, you know, my when my dad passed away, it was hard for me or whatever because the last thing he said to me was, "I'm giving up." The dad he had was had was on dialysis. And stuff, he said we were really close and stuff, and he blames himself because he was in and out of jail, which stressed the daddy out, which was the daddy probably was drinking or whatever. Okay, so by stressing the daddy out by being a gang banging, you know, street person, the daddy got sick or whatever, and then toward in the end gave up because he was sickly, okay. And so he said for me it was hard losing him and everything, okay. And so my testimony is like as hard as it was for me, I had to keep going. I had to keep getting up and keep moving on no matter how bad I felt. He even brought up how currently it's hard for him. He had those moments of wanting to go back to the streets, you know, because it's easier in his head to go sell some dope, you know, or gamble or, or whatever. You know, he's so he's like sometimes like it'd be it'd be calling me and I'd be like, no, nah, get out of my head. No, no, no. Okay. But he's trying to move forward or whatever. 
and be good. He said, I don't want to be no preacher. However, I do feel like I have a voice, a voice that needs to be heard based on my life and my struggles. I think some people don't get, you don't have to be a preacher in order to preach. Sometimes it is about just telling your story and helping people, you know, feel better about their life choices and their good, bad, and different in different days. So I mean, okay. Anyway, uh Zaria goes to, well, she's trying to see her mama. She said, Mama, we always talk, but since the fire, she ain't answer my calls or my texts. Okay. I feel like you think I caused a fire because I went and saw a psychic and I let the devil in. I said, ma'am, you've been seeing a psychic for what the past year or two at this point in time or whatever. If the psychic was the devil. The parent house would have burned down a long time ago. You didn't just go see a psychic. <laughs> You've been seeing so the, the child stopped. Okay. So her mom didn't come by the house like the owner chit chat or whatever. So the mom ain't mad. The mom was just probably traumatized to the fire. Um and got charged the phone up. Anyway, um <laughs> the Raya Ben just like, you know what, we good, mama. We love you, mama, okay. Um, yeah, I want to start putting my wedding to Troy, and like I think y'all should help me pay for it. And the mom said, Well, go help y'all gonna help pay for it. And this is does the parents pay for all the wedding because she was already married. But again, the mom said, Yes, we will help pay for this one too. And then Zariah Zaria this that she wants her bio father to walk her down the aisle. And I said, Oh, so that ain't her daddy. I had saw. Some I think it may have been I think it may have been Troy Mama saying that ain't even your real mama. I said, What the fuck? So she brought up how one she wants her bio father to walk her down the aisle. And mama then said, Well, can your daddy walk down there with y'all? She said, No, I want him to marry us. So I want my, my dad to marry us and my bio father to walk me down the aisle. So she brings up how she was adopted, how her mom told her. When she was three years old, that she was adopted. Her bio mom got her up for adoption when the bio mom was 16. Um, that last year, she found her bio father, and her and the bio father have been getting closer, talking, communicating. She also has a half brother she gets to know as well. And her and her bio father are doing good, you know, connecting. And the bio, the bio father did not know she existed. Okay, so boom, pow, pow, I want him to walk me down the aisle, and I want my dad to marry us. Okay, so both her father figures will be, you know, have a role in it. Um, she said she does not have a good relationship with her bio mom. She said when she turned 18, she reached out and found the bio mom and tried to build a relationship with the bio mom. And she said when I met her, I was just devastated, okay, that she told me I put you up for adoption for a reason, and it, was a, and it was a closed adoption, meaning what you here for, what you want, and that's a catch-22, because to me, I do feel like some people feel like, yes, I pushed the baby out, but I don't want to be a parent, so here, world, okay, I don't want nothing to do with you. Now, again, the mom at that point in time was 16. This is 32 years later because she's 32. It's possible the mama could have felt different. And maybe once she was reached out to, she would not be upset. However, I do feel like when someone makes a decision that they do not want to be a parent and they give the child up, and if they make the decision to say, hey, I don't want that child to contact me, I don't, is that unfair to the child? Yes. However, everyone has a right to their decisions. And in my thought process, it's the, the birth parent missing out on their child. So that's on them. Um, but I would not be upset if the person who gave me up at when they had me if they if they stuck to that choice for life, okay. Because the real is the right said, like my parents who raised me, great. I love them. Ain't no ain't that's them my, them my peoples. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like you know she had a you know 
a loving family or whatever. But, you know, her mommy was like, she struggled the whole time with being adopted. How, you know, she's like, I was never intimidated by Zaria's birth mom and her, you know, finding her whatever. We would have, we would have welcomed her with open arms. However, you know, that ain't what happened. Okay, but Zaria's my baby. I love her. You know what I'm saying? Won't nothing change that or whatever. I'm proud of her. I love her. And so it do seem like the, the her parents who adopted her gave her a good home. However, she has struggled with being adopted. You know, she brought up how it was hard for her, how growing up, you know what I'm saying? She always felt like, oh, they didn't want me, me and her birth parents. They didn't want me. And so for 32 years, she's dealt with it. She's dealt with feeling like she wasn't good enough for them to love and keep her. Even though she had a loving family, she kept thinking back to her birth family or whatever. And how growing up, it was hard for her. She was she was the only lighter skin person in the family. And she thought that was a little bit weird. Um, and then she found out she was adopted. And so even when she was younger, how the kids would teach everybody being so light skin, she need therapy. So because she I like how she said no one talked about how hard it is when you are an adopted child, how hard it is mentally, emotionally feeling like they didn't want me. I wasn't wanted. They gave me away. I wasn't good enough for them to love. And I do think. Those are valid points that no one thinks about. That's how the ch the adopted child felt. Um, I also feel like she had a loving family. At least she didn't feel like not only did my birth family not love me, I then was raised by a, a family who didn't love me either. She seems to have had a loving family. She just needs counseling because how she acts, even at 32, she needs some counseling, period, you know, um, so we shall see, you know, y'all, that was all for this episode, um, I'm about to watch Bell Collective, that review will be up as well, I have to watch Bell Collective, I have to watch Love and Marriage Huntsville, and I also have to watch the Meg Thee Stallion documentary, so all of that will be up, you know, either today or tomorrow and stuff, y'all make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, I gotta go, I love you all, bye! Thank you.